Hello, I'm Michael Tyler and welcome to another CarveRite CNC project. This project is called the Tri-Leaf Trinket Box. Makes a great gift or a nice item to keep for yourself. The carved box lid has a gracefully wrapped leaf design with a decorative whorl center. The box interior features three separate sections. Each section is a different depth. Those can be changed in the MPC files or included with the project. The project uses just the 1 16th carving bit and the 1 8 inch cutting bit with no other bits required. As usual, the project includes illustrated step-by-step -step PDF instructions you can print out as well as this step-by-step -step video where I lead you through the process I use to help you create your own trinket box. So please enjoy the rest of this video and have fun. Happy carving! Okay, I've lightly sanded these just to remove fuzzies that might interfere with the glue up and then I arranged these uh, sections, uh, the bottom, the middle, and the, the uh, top to uh, make a grain pattern that's pleasing to me. So to help remind me what order these go in, I've just uh, uh, labeled these and I've got up three for the bottom, up two for the middle, and up one for the uh, top section. And I just lightly marked those in pencil and we'll glue the first two sections together first and that, and uh, then sand these uh, tabs off. I'll use a spindle sander and some hand sanding and of course uh, this just makes it easier before it's glued to the bottom to uh, sand the internal parts of these divided sections. Okay, I squirted out a little bit of glue on a paper plate and I'm just going to glue these sections together here. I've got my up number two and gluing it to my up number one which would be the top piece for the uh, box dividers. So I'll spread this uh, glue thinly around the surface of this uh, first part and also on the surface of the mating part. Okay I'll come back with you as soon as I'm done spreading the glue around. Okay, I've got the glue all spread out on both surfaces, and I'm just aligning these. This uh, quarter inch hole, you can put a scrap dowel in there to help align them, but uh, most importantly is to get this aligned so these sides of the dividers and the outside of the box are lined up really nicely. So I'll let that glue set just a little bit, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna weigh it down might uh, clamp it, but I think weighing it down will be enough to uh, set that in place and allow it to dry. Okay, we're taking care of the lid detail and uh, the idea is to use a quarter inch dowel, glue it in the top of the box and have a bit of it extending out. I'll taper this end with a pencil sharpener and some sandpaper and then uh, after I glue this in, my plan is to go ahead and, and uh, slice that off flush and uh, sand it flush and then I'll drill a small pilot hole at the end of that dowel and install this brass threaded knob. 
Now, alternatively, if you wanted a, a wooden knob, you could get uh, some doll heads at the hobby store. They doll heads are not a bead. Beads have holes on uh, both ends. A doll head, uh, these are called ball knobs or doll heads, and you can uh, drill this out to a quarter inch size so it'll fit your uh, quarter inch dowel and glue that on and leave some of that dowel protruding. So you can just glue that wooden knob on there. But since I had this uh, brass knob laying around, I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and thread that uh, into a pilot hole at the end of the dowel after I sand it flush. So I'll just use this pencil sharpener to just put a bit of a taper on that dowel end. Then I'll round it over with some sandpaper. And that way it'll feed into that uh, central hole in the box a little bit easier. Okay, I'll come back when I'm ready to glue this into the box. Okay, I went ahead and cut this dowel uh, to a length of about uh, one and a quarter inches. And if I glue this in with this uh, flush to the top of the lid, it leaves about maybe a half inch, maybe slightly less than that, uh, poking through there, and that should be enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and glue this dowel in. I'm just turning it upside down over some wax paper, and I'll apply some glue inside the hole. And onto the dowel itself. And then we'll uh, let that sit and dry. So if we get any excess dripping through, it should get on the wax paper and be easy enough to remove. All right, we'll allow that to dry and then we'll come back with the rest of the process. Okay, I'm just using an awl to start a pilot hole for this brass knob that I chose for the prototype. And I'll just take a, a drill and drill an appropriate size hole for that, for that knob. And I'll just screw this in here just to get that started good. Uh, later after I apply the finish and I'll apply some candle wax or soap or something on the threads, that'll make it go in a little easier. Okay, so I got the pilot hole started and I'll just unscrew that and then we'll apply the finish. Okay, I'm in the process of applying a, a pre-stained sealer and it's just a mixture of bullseye zinser seal coat and uh, denatured alcohol, so I just mix equal amounts of both products together. It also has a benefit of uh, on carvings if there's any stray fuzzies left over from the initial sanding. Uh, it will uh, raise those fuzzies up and stiffen them up so you can sand them off a little easier. So I like to use this on, on a lot of products, that uh, a lot of uh, wood products, so that it will even out the stain, especially on uh, softer woods. Now this uh, particular species of pine is from New Zealand. It's sold uh, at the big box stores as select pine, but it's uh, actually radiata pine, and it has a hardness level uh, equal to or greater than uh, the hardwood poplar that you may be familiar with. The big box stores sell that too. So uh, I like to use this wood because it's uh, readily available and easy to work, and it's a little bit harder uh, than your standard uh, pine boards like number two boards that you find at the big box stores. Plus this has a benefit of being kiln dried so it's a, a better quality. Uh, very seldom will you find any knots so it's a clear pine. Very easy to work with and finish. Okay I'll continue applying this uh, coat and let it dry and then we'll sand it up and proceed with the next part of the finishing process. Okay, we're ready to apply the stain. I'm going to apply a Rust-Oleum wheat color, and this is the um, ultimate wood stain that dries in about an hour, and you can put a clear coat over it. So the plan is I'm going to stain the outside of the box 
uh, probably the rim. I might try to leave these natural. We'll see how it goes. If I go over, I'll just go ahead and stain the tops of those. But I'm going to leave this internal section uh, natural. And then I'll apply a stain to the lid as well. So I'm going to start with the internal part first. I'm going to get this out of the way so I don't accidentally splatter on it. I'm going to uh, try to do a wipe on technique just because it'll give me a little better control and since I'm trying to keep this natural inside I'll be able to hold on to these sections here while I apply the stain. So here we go. Okay, so the stain is dried and I've already coated the uh, bottom side of the lid and the box with a Krylon gloss and then I'm going to apply a few light coats of the uh, gloss over the uh, top lid, top of the lid and the uh, box exterior and interior. Then I'll finish that up with a satin uh, just to take that gloss off. Now sometimes people ask me, well why if you're going to end up with a satin, why don't you just use satin through the whole process? Well there's a very good reason for that. Uh, gloss uh, finishes build up pretty quickly and they don't have the particulates in uh, their formulation like the satin and matte and flat finishes do. If I applied all of my coats using a, a satin or a matte or a flat finish, those particulates build up and it can uh, yield a cloudy finish. It sort of hides the grain. It just doesn't look quite right. It's uh, cloudy. So if you're going to end up with a uh, gloss finish, you can use gloss throughout the whole process. But even when you want to end up with a satin matte or flat finish, it's not a bad idea to just go ahead and do your main buildup coats with the gloss and then as a final uh, coat use the satin matte or flat finish uh, just as the final coat to take that gloss off. So little tip for you there and that's been my process for many years uh, to avoid that cloudy finish when using the uh, formulations that are contain particulates like the satin matte and flat finishes do. So build with gloss first, finish up with your satin matte or flat. All right, we'll let that dry a little bit and I'll apply a few more uh, light coats, uh, build up that finish, and then we'll get back to the rest of the project. Okay, we're ready for the final assembly. I'm just going to put a little bit of candle wax, rub it on the threads of this brass knob that I'm using just to make it drive in easier into the lid. There we go. Then for the bottom of the box, I've got these uh, 
silicone vinyl bumpers, they call them. And I'll put, uh, well, you, can all, you only need three of them, but you can put four if you want to. But they're a self-stick pad, and uh, you just peel off the sticky part on the back of the pad and apply it to your box. So I'll put uh, three of those on here, and that'll protect the bottom of the box finish and also the surface it's placed upon. All right, that completes this month's project, the Tri-Leaf Trinket Box. I hope you enjoyed making this project, and if you give it away as a gift, I'm sure that the recipient's going to enjoy it for many years to come. So until next month, this is Michael Tyler. Happy carving!